people have been spotted in the water here in Black Rock and Salt Hill, both today and yesterday. All right, guys, so we're going to start today's lesson by setting up our notebook so that you have it all ready to get through the lesson. If you have not picked up the papers for today, pause right here and go to the back counter and get what you need. Um, we're on 17 through 22 today. So 16 should be the end of unit one. 17, you're going to have the page that says unequal heating of the earth. That's the beginning of the reading passage. 18 will be the second page of that reading passage, with 19 being um, questions that go with it. Um, we're going to go through that kind of together later in the video. On page 20, you will have ocean currents and convection. So we're going to talk about what convection is, how what role the sun plays in that, and um, how that affects ocean currents as well. Um, so you're going to have that on 20 and 21 in with the Venn diagram. 22, same thing. You're going to have another little strip that has five questions about those notes. We're going to go through all of that in the video. Um, and then 23 won't have anything on it yet. Okay. So today's learning target is that you should be able to recognize that the sun provides the energy that drives convection within the atmosphere and oceans producing winds. Now, I don't think we, we might not quite get to wind today, but we will definitely look at the sun's role um, in making the currents and, and causing um, atmospheric changes. Ah! Dear Tim and Moby, where does wind come from? From hope. Well, that's one way to move air, and that's just what wind is, moving air. But there's no giant propeller pushing wind around the Earth. Believe it or not, the wind is caused by the sun. If you've seen our thing on seasons, you know that the tilt of the Earth causes some places to be hot or cold at different times of the year, and other places to be either hot or cold all year round. The uneven heating of the Earth's atmosphere is what gets air moving. The sun heats up the Earth's surface, warming the nearby atmosphere. Warm air is less dense than cool air, so it rises. That leaves some empty space, and cool air from nearby rushes in to fill it. The area of rising air is what weather reports call a low-pressure system. As the warm air rises, it cools off and eventually sinks back down. The system is like a big engine sucking in air from all around it. What you end up with is a whole lot of moving air, and that's what we here at Brain Pop like to call wind. There are different types of wind that blow in different patterns. Prevailing winds blow all the time over a particular part of the world. They're constant because the equator always gets more direct sunlight than the poles. Warmer air at the equator creates a huge low pressure area, which is filled by cooler air from the poles. Their direction is affected by the Earth's rotation. Winds in the northern hemisphere are deflected to the right, and they turn to the left in the southern hemisphere. Jet streams are strong winds that blow about 10 kilometers above ground. They blow in circles with one jet stream over each hemisphere, and they blow fast, up to 200 kilometers per hour. Jet streams can move big chunks of air and really affect weather. Trade winds are mild, constant winds that blow towards the equator from the northeast or southeast. Where the trade winds meet, there's a calm area called the doldrums, where there's hardly any wind at all. Local winds are particular to certain countries or areas. Geographic features like mountain ranges or bodies of water can drastically affect wind conditions and create localized winds like the Santa Ana winds in the North American Rockies and the Fone in the European Alps. Wind power can be harnessed to make electricity, which you can learn about in our Energy Sources movie. What are you doing? What do you mean you're trying to break wind? You can't break wind. It's made of air. What? So unequal heating of the earth. The source of almost all earth's heat energy is the sun. The sun gives off its heat in the form of electromagnetic radiation which travels through space. About 45% of the sun's radiation is actually absorbed by the oceans and lands. 
the remaining 55% is sent back into space. The sun's heat is distributed throughout the atmosphere, land, and the oceans by radiation, conduction, and convection, providing energy to make weather. Thermal energy always moves from substances of higher temperature to substances of lower temperature. The heat is going to be lost. So if it's hotter, it's going to lose heat energy to the cooler object or the cooler matter. <clears throat> Unequal heating of Earth occurs mainly due to Earth's tilt on its axis. Because the Earth is a sphere, areas closer to the poles receive indirect rays at a much more shallow or oblique angle and have cooler temperatures. The sun's rays are more direct and straight on at the equator, resulting in warmer temperatures. This causes the global air temperatures to vary greatly. This is also why the equator is always warm and the poles are always cold. This uneven heating creates convection currents in our ocean and atmospheres. And this movement has an impact on our weather too. Hopefully you recall that when water is heated, it expands and its density decreases. Less dense matter tends to rise in a fluid such as ocean water. As the area around the equator warms, convection occurs in the oceans distributing the heat. Moving water in the oceans are called ocean currents. There are two types of ocean currents, surface currents and deep currents. Global winds blowing across the ocean transfer energy to the ocean. The winds drag along the surface of the ocean, creating currents that move along the surface of the ocean. Surface currents are classified into two groups cold currents and warm currents. Cold currents tend to move from Earth's polar regions toward the equator. Warm currents move from the tropical latitudes toward the poles. Ocean surface currents are caused mainly by global winds. The ocean surface currents move in a curved pattern because of the Earth's rotation. Other factors, including the temperature of the ocean, influence the complex spirals of ocean currents. Deep ocean currents happen because of differences in density, which result from temperature and salinity differences. Salinity means the amount of salt dissolved in the water. Cold water is denser than warm water, and water with many dissolved salts is denser than water with fewer dissolved salts. When colder, saltier, denser water meets less dense water, the denser water dives under the less dense water. That was a lot of leaves. Yeah, let's go eat. Good idea. Oh, whoa! That huge gust came out of nowhere. How come wind is so powerful? You can't even see it. Bad breath is invisible too, but it's pretty powerful. Aw, gross. Our breath and the wind are made up of the same thing. Air molecules invisibly floating in space. That's what gives wind its mass or substance. And when it's windy, all those molecules are moving? Like a herd. Sometimes they float gently in a breeze, and other times, like in a hurricane, they're blasted along at hundreds of miles an hour. But what makes the wind strong or weak? Everything from a breeze to a hurricane blast is caused mm. by air pressure. That's the force with which air molecules push against us and everything around us. When the air pressure changes, so does the strength of the wind. What makes air pressure change? The height above sea level, the temperature, and the amount of water vapor in the air. Those three things make air more or less dense. When air gets colder and closer to sea level, it gets denser. That means the air molecules are closer together, so there's more air pressure. So when air gets warmer and higher, there's less air pressure? Right. The air molecules are farther apart or less dense. Hey, it's like the leaves we picked up. When they're together, they're heavy and hard to lift. But scattered around, they're lighter. Yeah. So it makes sense that dense air sinks and less dense air rises. The pattern of rising and falling air is called a convection cell. Convection cell? Check it out. Say we're at the beach. In a convection cell, the air over the sea cools and sinks. That's a downdraft. At the same time, the air over the land gets warmer and rises. That's an updraft. 
the cool, high-pressure air moves towards the land and heats up, replacing the warm air. And the warm, low-pressure air moves out to sea and cools, replacing the cool air. The movements of the air cause wind. All this air movement is affected by one more thing. Lay it on me. The Earth's rotation. As the Earth spins, it pulls the wind and makes it travel on a slightly curved path from west to east or east to west. It's called the Coriolis effect. Anyways, they're all kind of winds. They even have names. Yeah, like a breeze and a gust and, well, no. Like polar easterlies, prevailing westerlies, and trade winds. Uh, huh? Polar easterlies are winds that come in from the poles and blow east to west. Prevailing westerlies are warmer winds blowing in the middle latitudes, and trade winds are near the equator. So that gust of wind that blew through and ruined our hard work, was that a prevailing westerly since we live in the middle latitudes? It probably was. You know, this wind thing is pretty fierce. I never realized wind was caused by changes in air pressure, or that air pressure is affected by three things. Temperature, height above sea level, and amount of water vapor in the air. And the convection cell stuff, hot air rising, cool air sinking, it's wild. But it's not as wild as the Coriolis effect. That's the spinning of the earth that makes winds curve. Wind is invisible, but so powerful. Wow, Sam, I'm blown away. Well, it was quite a whirlwind of information. So ocean currents are horizontal flows of water through the ocean. There are two main types, surface currents and deep currents. Um, the surface currents are the movement of water near the surface caused by wind, and the deep currents are movement of water be far below the Earth's surface. Um, the, I'm sorry, the ocean surface. The sun drives convection currents within Earth's oceans, because we know by now that convection is caused by changes in temperature. The Coriolis effect is the apparent curvature of wind and ocean currents due to the rotation of Earth. Due to the Coriolis effect, ocean currents circulate clockwise in the northern hemisphere and counterclockwise in the southern hemisphere. And you kind of need to know that so you understand like how the ocean currents are moving, how those different water temperatures are moving from one hemisphere to the other. So ocean currents near the equator are going to bring warm water to the areas in which they circulate. Ocean currents near the poles bring cool water to the areas in which they circulate. If you have an activity that you're going to be doing tomorrow, this is very, very important for what you're going to have to do. Okay? Um, climate. Ocean currents are going to help regulate climate. So the currents distribute water that has been unevenly heated by the sun's radiation. Convection is caused by uneven heating. The colder water is going to sink, the warmer water is going to rise. The regions located near warm ocean currents tend to have warmer and more humid climates. Think Houston. Houston is very humid. It's near that Gulf of Mexico that is a very warm source of water. Regions located near cold ocean currents tend to have cooler climates. So, for example, the United Kingdom um, is located near a warm ocean current and experiences a much warmer climate than areas of eastern North America, which are located near a cold ocean current. Um, so, like, that's why you don't see a lot of hurricanes in the northeastern United States around New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania areas. Um so convection on Earth, convection on Earth is the transfer of heat through the movement of liquids or gases. Um, the three major places convection occurs is in the ocean, in the atmosphere, and right around Christmas time we'll go over convection in the mantle of the Earth. So in the ocean, warm and cold ocean currents distribute heat from the equator to the poles. In the atmosphere, warm air rises and cool air sinks, which has an impact on weather patterns. And we're going to learn all about um, the pressure systems. So you, the last thing you have in your notes is a Venn diagram. And it gives us facts that go with convection in the atmosphere, facts that go with convection in the ocean, and then things that are um, relative to both. So in the atmosphere, it occurs with gases in the air, um, it heats and cools much more quickly than in the ocean. It causes wind that can affect weather patterns. 
in the ocean is going to occur with water in the ocean. It's going to heat and cool much slower um, and cause ocean currents that can affect climate in areas close to coastlines. Um, for both, they are going to be a, a way to transfer heat. They have an impact on temperature, precipitation, climate, etc. And of course, they both occur on Earth. So that is it. Um, you're going to take those notes um, and use them to answer the questions on the next page. That's it. <laughs>